fashion, this is not. However, she did none of that. She didn't listen to me. This dress is a mess. Four pieces that look like you got them from a thrift store. You know my name, Neon Noir, Neon Noir, on my road to fame. I am that coming for your spot. Neon Noir, Neon Noir, now let me show you what I got. Hello, my beautiful life brides. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest crayon in the box. If you're new here, or if you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race Global All-Stars Episode 3. That is right, I am jumping straight to Episode 3, and I actually skipped Episode 1 and 2 because it came out at the same time while I was on holiday. But if you still want me to do the fab and drab for those episodes, let me know in the comments below, and if enough people mention it, I will definitely go ahead and do it. But today we are looking at Episode 3, and in Episode 3, we are having a ball. A mystery ball, that is. That is right, the queens must give us not one, not two, but three looks. So with 13 queens and three looks each, we're looking at 30 plus looks. So so buckle in, this is gonna be a long episode. So without further ado, let's find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. The first category is boss lady in charge, where the queens must give us, well, actually, I'm not actually quite sure what they were supposed to give us. Some people decided to go a little bit more CEO and boss lady in charge, while the other ones decided to go with more of the international spy lady in charge. So let's get into this category and show you what I am talking about. First up, it's Pathia, and Pathia is coming out in this sort of uh, blue suit with these uh, gold buttons and this light blue blue lapel. She's got tall blonde hair with all of the security cameras on her. She is Sir Valence, that is. She decided to go more into like the government is spying on you uh, vibe. She's got her hair with the CCTV cameras on it, but she's also dressed with a little touch of Austin Powers. At least that's the Austin Powers I saw. Yeah, maybe it's just just the blue and the things like that. I love Pythia. Pythia is so conceptual and she, right off the bat we start off with such a strong look. The CCTVs is so interesting because it, it's both got hair but it's got the campiness to it but it totally feels a hundred percent Pythia. But also when you start looking at the suit it's like not your typical suit. It's got like the flared bottom pants. It's got the little jacket but it's all closed up. All in all this is excellent and definitely gonna be a <laughs> Next up, it's Eva Laqueen, and Eva Laqueen is coming out in this white dress with this really detailed fluffy collar and this little fascinator on her head. She goes on to explain that she is Madame Orchid with this orchid style dress. This is a good example of where things start to go in different directions. Her whole text is all about how she is this woman of mystery and she is a Miss Orchid, but the dress is really just screaming to me as like rich bitch in the valley, you know what I mean? She definitely feels like an expensive woman but she doesn't feel like anything that it has to do with spies or mystery or anything like that she just looks good and as she looks good I'm gonna give her a good rating and it's gonna be a bow. Next up, we have Queen Kong, and Queen Kong is coming out in this leopard dress with this little red bolero jacket that is lined with the leopard print. She's then got big blonde hair and glasses. She definitely is giving me more like sexy teacher vibes, or maybe she is the owner of a hairdresser. That is really what I was getting, but I was definitely not getting spy. And that's what made me think, is this even a spy category? But regardless of spy or not, is it good? First up, I will say, that I really like that she lined the dress and made the dress out of the same fabric because it kind of blends in and it really feels very put together. I like this little jacket, it's really cute, but the overall look isn't very expensive looking. The question is, was she trying to go for expensive in the first place? Because it is a little bit of like this hoochie mama dress. That's why I said she might be like a little bit of a hairdresser because you know, they get all dolled up to go to work, you know what I mean? Then she's got it with this big blonde hair and you know what, the blonde hair works on her because she had the red jacket, I I might have went red instead just to like really tie it in together but other than that it's fine the thing is fine is not good enough for global all-stars or runway i was expecting so much more this is an outfit that you would wear maybe in a challenge not necessarily on a runway and because of that i'm gonna have to go ahead and give her a drab <laughs> 
Next up, we have Athena Leakies, and Athena is coming out in this power suit. Give you this gray suit with this red sort of jacket piece on top that is giving a little bit of SM vibes, but keeping it fashion. She really took this men's power suit and deconstructed it and made it like drag and avant garde. This feels like something that is really cool and very androgynous, which I'm really appreciating it. She then paired it with a red hair, and I think red hair was the exact hair you needed with this because it's got the red here. So then you tie the red at the top. And to continue the androgynous look, she decided to go with like a slick back bob. Now that's probably not the hair I would have chosen, but I really do like this slick back hair with this look because you definitely feel the character. It's really that uh, mix of mask and femme. And I really appreciate that because drag is supposed to be pushing gender boundaries. And this does that. This feels like a really cool outfit that a fashion designer can wear, a man can wear, a woman can wear outside in the real world if you're like that cool bitch in the real world. All in all, I like this outfit and it's gonna be a bow. Next is Kitty Scott Claus, and Kitty Scott Claus is coming out with this a sequence a suit with this shirt and this a blonde hair. Like Athena, Kitty Scott Claus decided to go with a suit, power suit meaning, you know, CEO, so I definitely get the reference here. The difference between Kitty Scott Claus and Athena is that Kitty Scott Claus didn't really do much with it. She just wore a suit and called it a day while Athena's really took a suit and brought it to the next level. Kitty Scott Claus's look feels almost like a caricature of a James Bond as opposed to the James Bond, you know what I mean? So I hope that she was trying to go camp and not fashion because fashion this is not. And for that reason, for Kitty Scott Claus, it's gonna have to be a drab. <laughs> Next up is Miranda Lebrado, and Miranda Lebrado is coming out with this red hat, this red jacket with these things coming off of her shoulders and these black tight pants. As soon as she came out, I just yelled, Carmen San Diego! And in Carmen San Diego is exactly what she was serving. Am I the only one that got the reference? Am I the only one that was playing the video game and thought she was the coolest bitch? When I was a kid, I was in love with Miss Carmen Sandiego. She was going all over the world and I thought that was so cool. And that's why I became an international drag queen, of course. But back to this look, I love this look. Not only is this referencing something from my childhood, so it's got a lot of that nostalgic factor, but she's made it something else and made it really cool. This jacket is not how Carmen had it. She definitely did a lot more with it. I love this like puffer jacket vibe to it but it's also got sort of like latex or leather or pleather or plastic whatever this is made out of that material just feels kind of cool and interesting and edgy so she's bringing the edge to miss carmen san diego and also like carmen san diego was that international bitch that was owning the town so girl all in all she looks cool af and is definitely gonna be a fuck Next up is Neleria, and Neleria is coming out in this uh, gray jacket with this pink lining. She's paired it with this gray hat with this pink lining, and she's got this little bodysuit underneath. Now, this is where you start to lose me a little bit because this to me is not really reading spy and it's also not really reading CEO because that is way too hoochie mama to be a CEO. And if you're a spy, what kind of spy are you? Maybe it's a play on Carmen San Diego, hence the big hat, but like Carmen San Diego is like notoriously red, so without the red, it's just a sort of coat thing. I feel like this one is definitely missing uh, a little bit of concept into it. I don't know what she's trying to serve. That being said, I do think she looks really good. And I always say, if you're not gonna follow a theme, you better look good doing it. And Millennia definitely does. I think that the gray and the pink work really well together. I think that this all reflects really nicely on her. I just don't think it follows the theme. But at the end of the day, she looks good. So she's gonna get a bow. Next up, it's Alyssa Edwards, and Alyssa Edwards is coming out in this full LED outfit. She's got this bodysuit that's got all these lights moving all over her. She's got this jacket on top, which has got more lights on it. She's got this like bomb that she's holding, so she is like the detonator, but also the person detonating it. And she's got this tall hair that really looks like she is that edgy, cool girl. When this came out, I was just like, yes, 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 yes. This is amazing. 
the thing is, is like, we knew Alyssa Edwards was that bitch and she came to prove it with this look. Now, I am very jealous because my name is Neon, so I've always wanted a neon look and seeing this, this is the look I want, mama. This is a super cool, super perfection, super shocking that it would come out of Alyssa, but also not at the same time. All in all, I have no comments but to say, fab, 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 fab. Next up, we have Vanity Vane, and Vanity Vane is coming out wearing this uh, black uh, jacket with this white shirt, this black tie, and this little hat paired with a blonde hair. She is definitely giving me a little bit of Russian sex doll turned uh, dominatrix turned international spy mystery, and I'm kind of digging it. This outfit is actually quite simple at the end of the day. It feels like pieces you can buy and put together, but the overall vibe is so cool. She looks like that really fierce bimbo she might be a stripper or she might actually might be a spy in a porno and i'm buying whatever she is selling i think that uh she is definitely that cool a bitch that i want to be and that is why i'm gonna go ahead and give her a ah! Next up, we have Soa de Muse, and Soa de Muse is coming out in this sort of a white top with this white skirt with this like old school hair with a little bit of green in it. The top has definitely got all of these weird, interesting cutouts on it, and it's got a sort of laced up back. This definitely feels like a really cool contemporary look, but she goes on to sell this as a robot look. This definitely does not scream robot to me. Again, I am wondering what the prompt was that they were supposed to prepare for because this feels like a really cool chic outfit like she is a bad bitch now she does say she is a robot and when she turns around there are sort of like strings there so i guess that might be the robot vibe but if it was a robot i wish she would have made it a little bit more noticeable had those strings been done in a different color like green to match that green streak in her hair i think it would have really went a long way to help tell the story and i actually think that a little pop of color here and there would have really helped this outfit when you do mom monochromatic on the runway it sometimes doesn't read we see this a lot when people try to do a black look and now we're seeing it here with white so a little bit of contrast i think would have really helped i love this hair this black hair with this one green streak in it i think we just need some of that in the outfit to just really take it up a notch that being said this is still a pretty cool outfit and still gonna get a oh. Next up, we have a Galavaro. Galavaro is coming out in this white trench coat, a jacket, this blue shirt, this black tie, and this orange hair. She is giving you a little bit of scientist, a little bit of doctor. She definitely feels like the person that's behind the scenes doing all the crazy stuff to give it to the James Bond character. And maybe it's the white jacket with the orange hair, but I got a little bit of Dexter's Laboratory, which I'm also not that mad at because also my childhood and nostalgia. But regardless of which character you think, you kind of get the character and you kind of get the vibe. Now, Galavaro went one step further to make this whole outfit look like it's floating in the wind, as if she's just running or something of that nature. I don't get why it's floating in the wind, but I also kind of like that it's floating in the wind because it adds that extra like layer to it, which I think it kind of needs because otherwise it just would have been a jacket and a shirt and a tie, which is kind of like very pedestrian. So she took this pedestrian idea and made it more drag. I think this one's pretty Cool, and that's why it's gonna get a bump. Next up, we have Tessa Testicle, and Tessa Testicle is coming out in this black suit with this orange piping. She then paired it with blonde hair and a single eye patch. As she walks down the runway, you also see that her heels have little blades in them, and then she pulls out a blade. Now, as she walks down the runway, my first thought is, this kind of feels like more of an evil villain look rather than a boss CEO, but then I thought she was like, maybe she's the boss of the villains. I like that this is a suit because it goes to back to that CEO vibes. I like that there's an edge to it because it really feels like she's gonna come and kill you. But then I started to think, was this supposed to actually be for the Shivel Queen look? Hold that thought because I'm gonna get back to it once we talk about that category. But overall, this is definitely a vibe. It's giving me that person that's gonna come murder you, but it's also giving me that CEO, uh, that she owns a full company. Ultimately, this is just really cool and that is why it's getting a bump. 
Next, we move on to the second category, and the second category is Shivel Villain, where the queens must give us their best interpretation of a diabolical villain that's coming to kill the world. First up, we have Pythia, and Pythia is coming out in this black dress with all the rhinestones on it to kind of give you like this rib cage moment. She's got these really sharp hands. She's paired with this one-sided mask with this side parted hair. She is definitely giving you a little bit of that two-faced vibes, but keeping it a little bit alien and a little bit extraterrestrial, but also making it fashion and drag. I love this because this feels like a villain out of a, a cartoon or something, something that is out of this world, but also like really fierce. Us gays know that we love a good villain, especially a female villain, and this is a villain that I can get behind. If I had to change one little thing here and there is that I love this little green piece that's in her hair and I wish it was just a little bit of green somewhere else in her outfit but honestly that is the only thing I would change so that's why it is a hundred percent gonna be a ah. Next up, we have Eva Queen, and Eva Queen is coming out in this sort of a black jacket with these black tights, these black thigh-high boots, this black half-face mask with this blonde hair. She said that she's giving a little bit of that reptilian uh, vibe. At first, I didn't necessarily see it, but once they do a zoom into the outfit, you see that um, it is really black on black, and you see these sort of scales on her. And this is what I try to say to people. When you do a uniform color, it doesn't really read on the runway. I think that this outfit had really good intention, but it's missing that sort of a little bit of standout. I wish had she done this look, but maybe done it in a green, or if she had done it in the black, but done like the scales in green, then it would have caused a little bit more of a contrast and giving you that little bit more of that ooky spooky vibe. Had she done the reptile and the skill in the green, I think she should have paired it with green hair. And green and black always gives you a little bit of like that goosebumps, a little bit of that horror vibes, and I'm really into it. I think right now it still works as it is, but it's just not as strong and it's really not moving the needle so much. It feels like a really nice jacket with some pants and some boots. And it really the only thing that's really keeping it together to make it really interesting is this face mask. So overall, I feel like this could be a lot stronger than it is, but it's still Still not bad, and that is why I'm gonna go ahead and still give her a five. Next up, it's Queen Kong, and Queen Kong is coming out in this sort of a white look. She's got like this white bustier with these white pants and this white cape. She then paired it with white hair and this gold necklace. On her garment, there are green leaves, and she goes on to explain that she is an evil a villain who comes to lure men into her place. I was not necessarily buying this. First up, the color, white. White is a really hard color to do for a villain. Generally, we associate villains with darker colors, and I think a darker color would have been better. Now, I'm not saying you, can, you can't you can do white for a villain. I can think of an evil ice queen, for example, which white and blue would really work. But when you're talking about greenery, in this case, like this garden stuff, and white, this really feels more like Adam and Eve. My association is definitely more good person rather than a bad person. So if you did have to go bad person and you didn't want to go white, then I think everything else really needed to be a little bit fiercer to make that come through. As she explains the story of how she's this person luring people in, it really reminds me a lot of Poison Ivy. And then I see the garment with the green and I'm like, ooh, that could have been a way that she could have done it. Had she flipped the colors, made it all green with some like white stuff coming off of it, I think that could have really worked. I think a Poison Ivy-esque outfit would have been a really good way to uh, channel her energy. When I see her blonde long hair, I think of Game of Thrones and the Targaryens. And again, I think that's another way she could have went. They kept all the hair with the jewelry. I think that the gown, if it was a little bit more dragon-esque with some scales or something on it, that could have also been another direction. However, she did none of that. She didn't listen to me. Well, she never really even asked me, let's be honest. Right now, it's feeling a little bit flat and not really following the theme. And because it's not following the theme and it's feeling flat, I'm gonna have to go ahead and give her a drab. <laughs> Next up, we have Athena Likis, and Athena is coming out in this a black and purple number with these sort of a spiked arms. She's then got these giant spiked hands, and then she's even got little spiked 
ears. She then paired it with this dress that is all ripped up. And it is definitely giving me a little bit of like underwater creature vibes. Maybe she's a villain in sort of like an Aquaman or a villain in like the Little Mermaid, but whatever it is, I am sort of a buying it. First off, I love these little spikes. I think that they are very elegantly made. And I think spikes just in general reads villain. So I think that was a smart little move. And then she's got her spiky hands to tie into the, her spiky shoulders. And then the dress is ripped as if her spiky hands ripped the dress. So I think that that is really smart. But more importantly, I like that she brought it up to her face face and to her makeup because it made it go from just spikes on an outfit to more of a character of a creature of a villain and I'm buying the story and because I'm buying the story it is definitely gonna have to be a oh. Next up is Kitty Scott Claus, and Kitty Scott Claus is coming out in this silver little dress with these rhinestone details all over it. She then got these sparklers coming out of her breast, a shooting fire, and she's paired it with tall blonde hair. She said that she is giving Barbarella. I definitely got the Barbarella fantasy as she came out. I knew what it was, and I didn't even watch the Barbarella movie, but it's just become so iconic that everybody knows this look. The thing about Kitty Scott Claus is Kitty Scott Claus tends to go a little bit campy with her her looks. Maybe she was trying to go for sexy, but I wasn't reading it as sexy. I was definitely reading it as a little bit more of a character on this. But then I started to think, is Barbarella even a villain? Because I thought that she was a hero. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, because I might have to lose my gay card for this one. The other thing I'm going to say is this chest piece. She just kind of got sparklers stuck onto them. This feels really cheap. I wish she would have done something a little bit more armor onto it if she was going to go here. I immediately think of someone like Plastic Tiara did on All Stars 9, where they really shot out fire. That's what I'm kind of expecting at a global all-stars level. If you can't do that, then I think she shouldn't have done this at all. But then I think to myself, but this is all feeling very hero and not necessary villain. I think that actually had she done this entire dress in black and red as opposed to silver and then the hair in black, it would have definitely screamed a lot more villain-esque. But maybe she just loves Barbarella and wants to channel it. At the end of the day, she does look good in it. And I always say, if you're not going to follow a theme, you better look good doing it. And that she does. And that's why I'm going to go ahead and give her a soft bow. Next up, we have Miranda Labrado. She's coming out in this green, yellow, and pink uh, striped outfit with this giant face at the bottom, and she's paired it with red hair. First up, let's talk about this hair. I love this hair. It's definitely giving me a little bit of like the stepmother in Cinderella. So it's definitely giving you a little bit of that evil vibes, but a little bit of that vintage vibes. I also really like this face that's on her dress. I think it's really cool. It's giving me a little bit of Picasso vibes and a little bit like unique and original, which I really appreciate from somebody like Miranda who's coming from Brazil. So it is giving you a different side of drag. Now this other side of her, on the other hand, I'm not quite getting. I don't really get what this is happening with it. It feels like there's a little bit too much going on. I think this would have looked a lot better had it just been simpler on one side and just had the face on the other side. The other thing about this is the colors. Bright colors like yellow and green and pink usually makes you feel very joyous and happy. So it doesn't really necessarily read as Evil Queen. I think that had this been the exact same dress and done in like dark blacks and purples and blues, I think you would have gotten a little bit more of that evil vibe. That being said, I do like the garment and it is really original. And one of the reasons I watch Drag Race is to get inspired and to push my thinking. And I think that this kind of does that. Yes, it doesn't fit the theme, but it is unique. And it's really hard to be unique after like, I don't know how many seasons of Drag Race. So for that reason and that reason alone, I'm gonna have to go ahead and give Miranda a five. <laughs> Next up, we have Nelenia. Nelenia is coming out in this black and red spiky number. She's got the spikes all over her and she's got this really spiky red hairdo. First up, the hair. I love this hair. I love the spikes. It's giving you a little bit of that punk vibe and this black and red combination definitely makes it feel evil. Now, when it gets to the body, I feel like there's maybe one to too many spikes. It, she definitely feels a little bit like a ball and I don't get to see her shape. I wish it was a little bit more 
curvy and these spikes were a little bit more strategically placed because right now it is wearing her as opposed to her wearing it. I do appreciate that she did decide to go with a red boot because it does give you a little bit of contrast and again correlates back to the red hair. I just wish there was a little bit more skin. I say that just so that it can give your eye a little moment to rest. All in all, not a bad look because it does scream evil queen but also not necessarily the best so it's gonna be very middle of the road and get a soft bath. Next up, we have Alyssa Edwards. And Alyssa Edwards is coming out in this black of feather moment with this black hair, with this crow in it. And she's got these gloves on and these boots. And mama, this is an outfit. She's definitely giving you like a little bit like that black swan, but taking it up the next uh, level. And then she's got the crow in her hair and a group of crows is called a murder. So we kind of associate that with villain. So again, this kind of really makes a sense. The overall vibe is super but the one thing I will say is I do feel like there is a lot going on. I feel like around her face, Alyssa could lose one or two elements just so that it can like her face breathe a little bit because she's got the feathers coming up here and the things dangling from her head. I think that the things dangling from her head could disappear and then just kept the top piece. I think that would have just like cleaned it up just a little bit. But honestly, that's my only little comment. So it's 100% going to be a bob. Next up, we have Vanity Vane, and Vanity Vane is coming out in this spiky helmet with this black bodysuit, this like gray and black hair, these thigh-high boots, and these sort of spiky nails. Now, I feel like everybody decided to say villain and go spiky, and now it's starting to feel a little bit repetitive, but that's not Vanity Vane's fault. It's just the placement that she got put into this lineup. Now, Vanity Vane's outfit is really simple. It is just a simple bodysuit. She really did put all the emphasis on the headpiece and the hands. So it is uh, simpler comparative to most people, but when you look at it from afar, it is effective. I think it definitely feels a villain-esque, but I do like the makeup that she did because it's definitely feeling a little bit more fierce, a little bit more furiosa of Mad Max, which I really appreciate to kind of help this villain vibe. Now, the one thing that really is bothering me is she decided to go with like white tights or something, and it doesn't really match her skin tone, and I think that that's a little bit of a miss. Vanity vane has got these beautiful tattoos that kind of give you that edgier vibe. Vibe, and I wish she would have done like a tattoo suit underneath and continued the tattoos onto her legs. I think that would have really helped. But overall, it's still a vibe and I appreciate vibes. And that is why I'm going to go ahead and give her a soft bow. Next up, we have Soa the Muse, and Soa the Muse is coming out with this a green hair and this jacket, and she pulls off her jacket to reveal this bodysuit with this black and green elements. And she definitely feels like she's coming straight out of a video game. It's giving me a little bit of cosplay, a little bit of character, and a little bit of that like gamer fantasy, which I'm actually quite liking because it is different than what everybody else did. I also think that the green and the black really work well together to kind of give you that villain vibe. Is it a little bit cosplay? and costume me yes but do i really mind no this is drag at the end of the day and i do think that we can be playing into the cosplay world i feel like there's a lot of references there and i think that this is a cool character and something a little bit more different for so is the muse now i wish that there was a little bit more details added onto it the bodysuit feels a very simple i think some some buckles or some rhinestones or some different patterns with maybe some mesh would have really helped take this up to the next uh, level but i could see the direction that they were going in and I kind of do appreciate it. It's for those reasons that I'm going to go ahead and give them a bow. Next up is Galvaro, and Galvaro is coming out in this like green snakeskin jacket, and she opens her jacket to reveal this sort of a naked bodysuit that is filled with rhinestones. She's paired it with like red and orange hair. And as she turns around, you see that the jacket is cut out to reveal to her naked buttocks. Now, I will say that a snake skin definitely makes me feel a little bit villain-esque, a little bit edgy. So I do think that the snake skin jacket was really cool. The bodysuit underneath is a this sort of a naked illusion. I don't necessarily get them together because it is feeling a little bit like Adam and Eve and the snake. I wish it would have just been a snake bodysuit or maybe even 
even like a vines or something to kind of give you another element, but it's not bad. I get it. It feels original. It feels different. So I can kind of go with it. The part that bothers me is the hair. I find that the hair just doesn't match with this outfit. I think it would have looked better with green hair or black hair, or maybe even some sculpted moment with like a little bit of a snake in it. I think that would have been really cute to take it up an extra level. This is by no means a bad uh, look. It's just kind of forgettable and gets really lost in the mix. So it is very middle of the road, but for me, a middle of the road is always a safe space to be in. And that is why she's getting a very safe, but middle of the road. Bye. <laughs> Next up, it's Tessa Testicle, and Tessa Testicle is coming out in this red jacket with this red hat. As she comes down the runway, she removes her red hat and removes her jacket to reveal this black dress with this red piping, and she goes on to reveal this to give these sort of metal boobs. Now, remember what I said that I think Tessa Testicle switched her outfits? This is exactly what I said here as well. I think that this was supposed to be the hero to her villain, and her last one was supposed to be the villain, but when she saw somebody else do a Carmen Sandiego vibe she probably switched them saying that she can kind of get away with both and she kind of does i think that this carmen san diego look with the red is really strong i think that the black and the red piping is really strong because these colors generally go a little bit more villain-esque and these boobs are really cool with this metal it does feel like the hero comparative to the villain but on this grand scheme of things when some people didn't even go that villainy i think this is a really smart look i probably would have switched them but it is still good enough to get a bow. And now it's time to move on to the third and final look. The category is International Queen of Mystery, where the queens had to take fabric from the workroom and create a look right there in the workroom in like 24 or 48 hours. I don't know how much time they gave them. So these are all custom made creations. So we're gonna have to judge these a little bit more loosely because let's face it, they didn't get fancy designers to do it and they didn't have a lot of time. So first up, we have Pythia, and Pythia is coming out in this a red latex a number with these pointed shoulders, this latex headpiece, and this black hair. She's definitely giving you a little bit of Britney Spears, but making it a little bit kooky, a little bit villain, a little bit caricature, and 100% Pythia. First off, doing a catsuit and doing a catsuit fitted like that is really hard. Then you get this really difficult material to work with, and everything is just so tight and perfect. Sometimes on a regular season, which are done by designers, we even don't even see things fit this good. Clearly, Pythia knows what she is doing. This is a very much a vibe. This is one of those looks that I'm surprised they made in the workroom. It looks like something you brought from home and spent some good time on it. Now, there is just like two small things I would have changed to just like bring it up an extra notch. Got this little cape on the back. I really like this little cape. I actually just wish it went all the way to the floor. I think that that would have really just made it more regal. And then she's got this like little uh, necklace with this a chain on it. I wish that she would have done more chains on her to kind of give you a little bit more of that edgier vibe. But all in all, this is pretty freaking amazing and definitely gonna be a bow. Next up, it's Eva Laqueen, and Eva Laqueen is coming out in this like very pale pink, sort of a dusty colored uh, dress with this uh, corset, and she's paired it with red hair. First up, let's say she made this in the workroom, and there's like a little bit of a corseted top. Girl, I could never. I also like this little draping. It fits her really well, and it looks really well made. I probably would have paired it with blonde hair instead of red hair, but red also works because it creates a little bit of contrast with it, which so I'm really not gonna knock her any points for that. I think this is a very cute look. Is it anything original and new? No, but she made this in the workroom, y'all. Like that is pretty freaking awesome. I think this, this is a great look, a great attempt, and definitely something that's gonna let her skate by with a bow. Next up, we have Queen Kong, and Queen Kong is coming out in this uh, gray skirt that goes all the way to the floor. She then got this crisscross gray top, and she's paired it with black hair. Now, the skirt itself fits her super well and really gives her her figure. I think that the top is a little bit loose, and I'm still not sure what is going on because it is giving me a little bit of Greek goddess vibes, but like 
not really at the same time. But the one thing that Queen Kong did really well with this outfit is when you have like a kind of mm outfit, you have to really know how to style it. And styling, she did. She got like one of her best wigs that are really tall and high. It, it definitely feels a little bit more regal, a little bit more goddess. You know, I'm thinking like the ladies that were in Hercules that would sing the songs. It's definitely giving me that vibe. I don't know about like international spy, but honestly, do I really care? No. I think this is a really cute outfit and definitely good enough to be a bum. Next up, we have Athena Leakies, and Athena is coming out with this barely there dress made up of like two pieces of fabric that cover just the little bits. She then got this skirt that's down the middle, and she's done all of these chains. She then paired it with this hair, and it's definitely giving me a little bit of like Mortal Kombat vibes. I'm thinking of like a Katana from Mortal Kombat, who had just that little slip in the middle, and it's got all of these chains on it. It's giving me a little bit edgy and a little bit cool, which is kind of like what Athena's vibe is. Now, is it the best constructed dress? Absolutely not. This is like literally three pieces of fabric attacked together, but it's effective and it's quite clean. And ultimately, you're only looking at this from far away, so you can kind of get away with certain things uh, like this. Now, would it be something I would wear in the everyday world? No, I think you would need to zhuzh it up a little bit. And I think she could have zhuzhed it up a little bit by adding maybe a little bit more chains here and there and or add a different fabric as well to kind of give you more uh, dimensions to it. But all in all, this is pretty cute. So therefore, I'm going to go ahead and give it a bow. Next up, we have Kitty Scott Claus. And Kitty Scott Claus is coming out in this a little a pink uh, dress with this flowing fabric on top of her. She's then paired it with this blonde hair. When I look at this garment, I think I've seen this garment before. And that's because there are so many queens that I know who have some version of this garment. And I've seen so many designers make this garment. This is like one of those very go-to drag looks that you'll see quite often, to be honest. And so what I think has happened here for Kitty Scott Claus, and yes, I am just speculating, is that she probably learned how to make one or two specific outfits in case she got a sewing challenge, and then she just kind of did that. And that's what I think this is. She probably knew how to make this and knew how to make it pretty well, and then just did that. And that's what you get. I don't think that this is particularly interesting or new, but it's definitely very passable for a sewing challenge because, girl, sewing challenges are hard, so you just need to get by. It's definitely not bad, and she looks cute in it and I could see her wearing it elsewhere. Maybe she needs to add a rhinestone or two, but she could wear it again. So for all of those reasons, I'm going to go ahead and give her a bow. Next up, we have Miranda Labrado, and Miranda is coming out in this a purple dress with this a purple scarf and this ginger hair. She then got these little things that are eyebrows or something and covering her face. As she comes out, immediately I think this dress is very well made. Clearly she is a queen who knows how to sew because this is not just like the two pieces of fabric that some of the other queens have done. This actually feels like it was thought through and put together. And then she did this face mask thing, which I'm like, I didn't get it. I find that it covered her face. I think she could have really lost it. I felt like she was trying a little bit too hard with this mask scarf thing. It really just didn't need it at all. And I think that that hurt the outfit a little bit. She then paired it with this beautiful hair. And like I said, when you do these design challenges, having really good hair really helps make the whole look come together. And this is what she does here. She goes on to explain that she is Daphne from Scooby-Doo with the purple and the orange. I personally did not get it until she said it. But once she said it, I'm like, yeah, I'm buying what you're saying. It is a color scheme. So I get that reference. And I like that she had a reference and didn't just like throw something together. But again, this is one of those middle of the road outfits. And I say middle of the road, not because it's bad, but just because it's forgettable. It's a dress. It's a plain dress. It works. So will probably get some use out of it. But yeah, it is what it is. That being said, she looks good in it. She looks cute. So it's good enough to get a bow. Next up, we have Nelenia. Nelenia is coming out in this uh, blue velvet catsuit with this silver armor on top of it. She then got this silver like jacket thing and this tall quafted hair. Now, this is a really fun outfit. First up, she made a catsuit, which again, a catsuit is hard to make, and she did it in this blue color. But what I like about it is that she also added this extra level on top of it with this sort of silver detailing and bra piece. I think that that is really smart. Not only does it create contrast and interest on the garment, but it also allows you to cover up certain areas depending on if you didn't make the full outfit 
well. I don't know if she did or didn't. I don't know if she's a seamstress or not, but it really works. I also like that she added sort of uh, the rhinestones here and there because it definitely adds a little bit of dimension. She then added this little jacket, which is like another piece that she created. And I'm like, wow, this girl put in some work. And then on top of it, she paired it with this beautiful hair. And like I said, many times when it comes to these design challenges, hair does matter. And she knows that And the hair with the silver matches, the silver accessories. All in all, I think this is really smartly put together and I really applaud her for it. Now, is there things that she could have done better? Absolutely. I think that the harness just doesn't look that expensive. That could have used a little bit of extra moments. And I find that the rhinestones are a little bit oddly placed on her outfit because they're just kind of like in her crotch area. And I kind of think would have liked it to see it a little bit more all over the place, more like a starry night. But other than that, it's pretty cute. And that's why it's getting a bump. Next up, uh, we have Alyssa Edwards, and Alyssa Edwards is coming out with this sort of like bustier top with this fabric on top of her. It's got different shades of beiges and brown, and she's then paired it with this beautiful hair. Now, this seems very much in the same vein that something like Kitty Scott Claus did, which is like this little outfit with this fabric on top of it. The difference between Alyssa's and Kitty Scott Claus is that Alyssa's feels a little bit more crafted and sculpted and put together, and I don't know that it necessarily is, but it feels that way and it feels that way because of the different colors she used and the shape she used on the bustier to kind of give you that feeling. Now the dress itself is very acceptable, very good. It does the job like most of these dresses do. But the other thing that Alyssa has done really well is paired it with this beautiful hair that is such a statement that makes the whole thing feel a lot more elegant and regal and over the top to Alyssa's standards. So I think that the styling here definitely helped the outfit. I personally would have liked to have seen this outfit in a different color. I think this would have looked a lot better in like say a red uh, or something a little bit stronger to just make it pop on the runway a little bit more but you work with what you have the other thing i might have also added is some rhinestones i think like all of the dark brown could have been like fully rhinestone and it would have given you a little bit of that shimmer to pick up the shimmer that's in her hair i think that would have just really tied it all in together but other than that this is pretty good and that's why it's getting a Bye. Next up, we have Vanity Vane, and Vanity Vane is coming out in this uh, black uh, dress, and she's got all of the jewelry all over her with this little masquerade and this uh, blonde hair. She definitely looks like a gal that's going to a gala, a little masquerade. She is that rich uh, person looking for a husband. I love this dress. I love this vibe. This is totally not the vibe I'm used to seeing for Vanity. Vanity likes to go generally a little bit harsher, a little bit edgier, and that's the way I usually like vanity but to see her go completely in this direction I also like this version the dress itself with this little ruffle detailing or whatever it is really works it makes a plain dress feel a lot more elevated and I actually have no idea how that's made I'm not a seamstress by any means of the imagination so I don't know if that's like a really easy technique or a really hard technique but whatever the technique is it is very effective this does feel like a dress that she bought in a store and normally that would be a little bit of a shady comment for me to Say, but when you're coming to design challenges and for me to say that it feels like something you can buy at a store I think that that is very much a compliment on top of it She did such great styling. She said, you know, I have this roughly dress. It looks very gala So I'm gonna give you this whole gala vibe with the hair and the jewels. It is very much just Chef's kiss even though it is a simple gown. It is very well put together and that is why she is getting a oh. Next up, we have So With The Muse. And So With The Muse is coming out in this like little uh, green dress with this sort of a cowl headpiece. She then paired it with a yellow hair, this mechanical eye, and these thigh high boots. She said that she was trying to go for a little bit of the Grace Jones, and I think she means that just because of the cowl detailing. But my initial thought was maybe more Kylie Minogue than Grace Jones, because it is missing the edginess and the coolness of Grace Jones. That being said, I actually don't even think it's that good have a Kylie Minogue either so I don't want to put that on Kylie I think that this dress is a very plain and very simple you can clearly see that 
So the Muse is not a seamstress and has a very limited talents when it comes to this specific skill set. And which is kind of a little bit of a shame because So the Muse always has this balance between like a little bit of that urban and a little bit of that fashion is which I really like about her. But when it comes to this outfit, it's missing all of it. It really is just like this little tube top with this little thing stuck onto it. On top of it, I don't know what she did with her tights, but her tights are also very pale and don't match her skin tone. So it also is much more distracting. I think she could have judged this all up with a lot more accessories. I think that the yellow on the green is a really nice color with the hair. I wish she would have done like maybe yellow bracelets or a yellow belt or yellow boots. I think that that would have helped like just tie the whole thing together. But as it is right now, it is very much going to be a drab. <laughs> Next up, we have Galavaro, and Galavaro is coming out in this beige trench coat, this orange top, and this brown dress bodysuit underneath. She then paired it with black hair. She said that she is the dangerous woman. I think by dangerous woman, she means that spy that's kind of hiding and undercover. At least that's the vibe I was getting. I think that it's also because of the trench coat that makes me think that she's like this undercover officer. Now, Galavaro goes on to explain that she decided to make four pieces and not one and this is only her like fourth time ever sewing a garment. I think this was a little bit of a stretch. I say this just because none of the pieces really feel like final pieces. You can definitely see that she went for quantity more than she went for quality. I wish that she would have done with one piece, done it a little bit better. But the fact that she went with four pieces, I think is also another way that you can get around this challenge. If you are not necessarily the best seamstress, if you do multiple pieces, it kind of shows that you put a lot more time and effort into it because it is a lot more work to do four pieces. So each of the individual pieces are not rated at the same level. Personally, this doesn't work for me. I would prefer to have one beautiful dress that is really cool than these four pieces that look like you got them from a thrift store. All in all, if you hadn't guessed, this is definitely going to be a drab from me. <laughs> And finally, we have Tessa Testicle, and Tessa is coming out with this pink bustier, with this pink dress, and this big blonde hair. She is giving you disheveled Barbie. I don't know what happened with this dress. This dress is a mess. Now, I like this color on her. I like this material of this dress. I think that she had a really interesting idea. I think that the pink with the blonde work really well together, but it just feels very cheap. First off, the boobs are very lopsided. Second of all, when she turns around, she's got a hole on the side of her dress. Third, this sort of sash that she had that she was supposed to be Miss Congeniality feels so cheap. If she was gonna do a sash, it had to be a separate piece. It had to have some embellishments on it. I just think she really bit off more than she can chew. Then on top of it, she decides to go with this big ball gown. And honestly, the ball gown totally eats her up. I think that this would have looked a lot better had it just been like a simple, like A-frame dress. I do love this hair. I think that the hair sort of balances out everything, which is definitely needed when you're doing such a big dress. But honestly, it's just a no. And normally I would say maybe you could save it with some styling, but there's no saving this dress. This is definitely going to be a drab. <laughs> Woof, y'all, that is it for this runway. Oh my God, so many queens, so many looks. I tried to keep all of my critiques really short just to speed through them because honestly, it's already midnight and I am still filming this. But enough about that. Let's get into the reason why you guys are here. You guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Well, my drab of the week for the boss lady in charge goes to Kitty Scott Claus. And for the Shevel queen look, it goes to Queen Aww. Kong. And finally, for the International Queen of Mystery, I'm gonna go with Soa the Muse. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fabs of the week? Well, my fabs of the week for the boss lady in charge goes to <laughs> Alyssa Edwards. And for the Shevel Queen look, it goes to Sophia. <laughs> and finally, for the International Queen of Mystery look, it goes to Pathia once again. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you agree or disagree with my thoughts? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Once again, my name is Neil Noir at Miss Neil Noir on all social platforms. And I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.